Welcome to week four of our six-week Mindful Educators Project. We are now past the halfway point in our project together. If you've begun to practice once a day, once a week, just when you think of it, or even if you've only practiced once when you got the remind text or the email, congratulations. You are making progress on this journey to develop a practice to allow you to have the benefits of mindfulness that you can take into the classroom with you. This week, I want us to look a bit more closely at some of the vocabulary that we've been using these past few weeks. We've talked a lot about mindfulness, and you may have a specific image or thought or idea that comes to mind when you hear the word mindfulness. Take a moment to consider what arises for you at that word, mindfulness. Do the same images, thoughts, or ideas come up now as compared to when we were first starting our project together? Are there new ideas or thoughts that arise? Whether they are mostly the same, a little same and a little different, or even mostly different, that's fine. Take a moment to consider the sameness of or the differentness of your ideas about mindfulness now compared to four weeks ago. Mindfulness is the awareness that rises out of intentionally paying attention in an open, kind and discerning way. In this way, mindfulness can be both a practice and a disposition. Now, mindfulness, as we learned last week, has its origins in the contemplative traditions of Eastern practices of meditation. But one key difference between the Eastern practices of meditation and our mindful practice is that while the goal of meditation from those traditions is to achieve a higher state of consciousness, the goal of mindfulness is simply to have an increased awareness of the present moment. In other words, we're focusing on bringing awareness to our experiences. And when we do this, when we bring awareness to our experience, we become more attuned to the external, like what we see, what we hear, what we feel, and the internal, what we think, what we feel, and what we experience, worlds that we experience. When we experience stress, we may not even be aware of it. But when we begin to notice and observe our own stress, we may be able to navigate that better. When we are mindful, we use all of our senses and all of our attention to help us. In other words, our attention is really awake and is focused on what's going on right at this moment. That brings us to another word that's often linked to mindfulness and that word is attention. When we talk about attention or attending, we might use other words synonymously with it, like focus or notice. Noticing, focusing, attending, they all relate to attention. And as we talked about a couple of weeks ago, attention is like a muscle. The attention muscle can be weak or strong and exercising that muscle or practicing attention makes our attention muscle stronger. Are there times that you can remember when you were very aware of what was happening at that moment? Maybe a moment of joy or surprise, of fear or even sadness. Some time when you were completely involved, enveloped even, by the moment. This kind of paying attention is what we're talking about when we talk about mindfulness and attention. Now there are different kinds of attention. Attention can be narrow and focused, or it could be broad. When it's broad, we can be aware of many things going on inside and outside. Our attention is a little bit like cropping our photos before we post them on Instagram. I can cut out all the extra and just focus on a single subject, or I can expand out and get a picture of the whole scene. With mindfulness practice, we can develop and strengthen both narrow and more broad attention. 
A third word that we often hear alongside mindfulness is the word anchor. And when we think of anchor, we often imagine a boat. And when do boats use an anchor? When the captain doesn't want the boat to be carried away by waves or wind. When that happens, she drops an anchor and the anchor keeps the boat steady in one spot. When we talk about an anchor in mindfulness practice, it's very similar. It's something we choose to focus on in order to keep our minds from being carried away. These last few weeks, we've been using our breath as the anchor of our practice. Now this week, we'll continue using the breath as the anchor or a breathing anchor practice. We'll anchor our awareness into the present moment like an anchor that roots a boat into one place. We want to practice quietly and calmly, redirecting the attention back to the breath each time the mind wanders. Using a breathing anchor or mindful breathing can help us to simply notice without judgments what our thoughts and feelings are and when they are carrying us away. When this happens, we gently redirect the attention back to the breath. If we practice this regularly, we learn to become less reactive to mental events as well as real life events. So let's begin our practice. As we get started, I am inviting you to take a moment and think, how can you prepare yourself to slow down, focus and treat yourself with kindness and curiosity? Can you set an intention for this practice? Find a relaxed, comfortable position. One that feels alert and relaxed. Let the body settle down into gravity Unclench the jaw, let the shoulders drop, soften the belly. Feel the support of the chair or the floor. If it's comfortable, gently close your eyes. If that's not comfortable, try for a soft gaze toward the floor about three feet in front of you. We do this to settle awareness and reduce external distractions. Let the hands rest wherever feels comfortable. Settle in, relax any areas of tightness or tension where you can and just breathe for a moment. Tune into the breath and feel the natural flow of breath. In and out. You don't need to do anything to your breath. It doesn't need to be deep. It's okay if it's shallow. It could be long or short, just a natural breath for you. Notice where you feel the breath in the body. It might be easiest to feel the breath in the belly, maybe the chest, the throat or the nostrils. If you're having a hard time finding the breath, you might try just gently resting your hand on your belly and then focus on your hand as it moves back and forth with the expansion and contraction of the belly.
See if you can feel the sensations of breath, one breath at a time. Notice when one breath ends and the moment when the next breath begins. If you've noticed that the mind has wandered, just gently redirect back to the breath. That's just what the mind does. It wanders. We just need to notice that the mind has wandered. No judgment because minds were designed to wander. You are practicing the skill of returning the attention back to what you want to attend to. How does the breath feel right now? How is the breath moving in the body? If the mind has wandered, just gently redirect back to the breath. Practicing returning to the breath each time is an exercise that builds up the ability to be calm and steady. And it builds our ability to keep the mind in one place for a short time and to not be carried away by what's happening around us, just to notice
Let's stay here for just a few more moments, locating the breath, resting with the breath. And when the mind wanders off, bringing attention back to the breath. This is our mindful practice. Resting the mind on the breath wherever it feels most comfortable and then bringing attention back to the breath when the mind wanders. In just a moment, we'll close our practice. And like last week, I'll ask you to just take a moment to notice how you feel right now. How does the body feel? How does the mind feel? Was today's practice easy or more difficult? Did anything about today's practice stand out? Let's follow one more breath all the way in and all the way out. We are closing our practice. I want to thank you for your practice today and for your continued participation in our project. I look forward to practicing with you again tomorrow. Have a great day.